Oh, look how pretty that meat is. That's beautiful. Best fresh swordfish. I mean, look at the coloration in that. It does not get much fresher. You'd have to eat it while I was still alive to get fresher. This is our cold right here. <laughs> that works. Get on camera. We gotta hurry up, guys. Joey's gonna beat us out there. You got four more, you only got one. There he goes. All good? We are good. All good, Bean? All great. All right, here we go. What are you looking at, Billy Bob? I've uh, run the boat today. You're always eating. Always eating. No. I got the world record tape warm, that's why. All right, we got a gorgeous sunrise today, 6.45 in the morning. Kind of chilly out in the low 60s, and we're going sword fishing. We're going to get a swordfish. I'm throwing a dark stick. We don't have time to train here today. I'm throwing a dark. You haven't hit one yet. I'm, I'm chucking the spear. I've hit one. I've hit one. Man. You haven't hit one yet. You gotta drill him in the head, just like Nick says. Drill them in the head. All right, we've got a new leader on this rod. Chase is stretching it out. You know, getting all the twists out of it, all the memory out of it. I can smell the bacon. Oh, buddy. Mm. Bacon. Mm. bacon. So it's supposed to blow 25 to 30 knots the next few days, but we're getting one last trip in. Our people didn't show up yesterday. We had a deposit, but uh, not sure what happened there. But let's see if we can't go catch a swordfish today. Here we go. One last day before cabin fever. Real deep here, it's almost 1500 feet. You can see that right there. And that's where the swordfish live, down deep near the bottom of the daytime. There's eight pounds, we got a 10 pounder on the other float rod. Here we go. Wobble. wobble, wobble, wobble. What do we got, Bean? Wobble, wobble, wobble. Who's doing the wobble? It's dancing, baby. It's light. Oh, I don't know. Oh. All right, it's pretty rough. Second drop, the buoy looked like it got light, started wobbling. Hopefully, the fish is coming up with it. We're going to find out here in a minute. The buoy is definitely light. You can see it laying on the side coming in right now. Yeah. All right, once we get that off, what do you guys get on that rod? And Brandon will coach you a little bit, right? Come on, come on. Don't be shy now, you hear? Bean, right. watch the level line. Watch your rod tip, Bean. Bean, watch your rod tip.
All right, we just tagged a small swordfish. We're on the board. Now we need to get one for dinner. It is choppy. Swordfish on, hoping it's a keeper. We tagged her at least one, hoping we get a second one. Sword. We got the steaks for dinner. Give me some knuckles. <laughs> nice job. We had to sit out here in the rough seas to catch them. to grow up and now we got one for the for the grill we got one for the grill now guys for the trigger oh, for the trigger got one for the trigger that's right that fish ate that baby and hailed it look at that down the hatch can't even see the hook Damn. that fish swallowed that bait really deep he wouldn't survive anyhow we wanted to eat one so we got one now Swordfish right there, baby, off Alamorada. Yeah, baby. Woo! That was... <laughs> She's a fatty. <laughs> All right, I got a quick bite to eat. We got to keep her sword in the box. We'll tag and release one. Choppy is three to five, occasional six. We're supposed to pick up to 25 knots here in the next couple hours. We're going to go inshore. Might make a bottom drop or two real quick so we catch a snapper. And then we're going to head back to Button Mary's Marina. We'll see you in there. We stopped on the way in from sword fishing, trying to catch a couple queen snappers. They've never caught any before. We'll see what happens. Fish a nice piece of bottom here, 600 feet. See that real lively. Oh, we got one on. Oh, we got a double header on. Has two swords and two queens and a joker. Hold that sucker up next to him for a picture. Awesome. In the box it goes. Oh, good eats. Good eats. Oh, Ours is bigger. Ours is bigger. Try again. Here, here, here. What do we got here? Oh, oh, that yours? Oh. oh. Alrighty, we're back at Button Murray's. The barn in the background there. We just got in. Actually, got nicer out now the last half hour. 
But the wind's coming tomorrow. I know we're gonna lose a few trips here coming up because we got 25 to 30 knot winds predicted. But we got a nice swordfish here that we're gonna fillet up and eat for dinner. A couple queen snappers. And Brandon is moving the table over here for us. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna do the swordfish first. I'm gonna do these queens after that, but. Beautiful fish, one of my favorite ones to catch. So this is kind of an average size swordfish here. It's about 90 pounds. You know, the average size here is gonna be 50 to 150. Anything over 200 pounds is pretty big for us. You know, three or 400 is real big or bigger is huge. And we do get some smaller ones. We let go one earlier today that was, he was probably a small keeper, but we tagged him and released him, let him go. Um, a lot of people have been asking, they wanna see what's inside their stomach. You know, a little, little learning piece here. Let's see what's inside the stomach here. So we're gonna gut them first. That. That's the swim bladder there. It's all blown up with air. So we pop that. Okay, here's his stomach right there. His stomach feels pretty empty, but I can feel our hook in there. So we're gonna pull on this and pull our bait out. So that's the bait that he ate, you guys. That's our bait right there. That's all that's in his stomach, not much today. Let's get to filleting. We're gonna come in right here behind his gills. Down like that. Pick up here where he left off. Right by his anal fin down here towards his tail. There's not a lot of meat in here, it's real fat. So I just always cut in front of this caudal keel there. That's the caudal keel. Part of the swordfish that are real fat and round. We're gonna go just like that. We're gonna spin them. Make it easier for us to work, you know. Take this knife. We're gonna take the knife and follow all the way down his backbone. like that. I'm just lifting up the fillet and I'm just kind of cutting over his uh, backbone, his spinal cord there a little bit, just as I lift it. We're gonna just do chunks of it. It's easier to cut this in smaller sections to take the whole fillet off. So we'll probably just do uh, three chunks here. So we're gonna come down like that, do the first one. To the second one. Oh, look how pretty that meat is. That's beautiful. So that's fresh swordfish. I mean, look at the coloration in that. It does not get much fresher. You'd have to eat it while I was still alive to get fresher. Let's knock this one set up. This fish, we had him iced down real good, so that meat is freezing cold. You know, he's nice and cold, iced down. And we're gonna get this on ice real quick too. Obviously we don't want to keep it out for a long time. Some people were asking about the belly wall. That's the belly wall, you know, the stomach there. There's a little slime on that. So we're going to use the knife and push some of the slime off of it. Get rid of that piece there. Now that's clean right there. That's prime right there. That's the center cut of the fish. Look at the colors. That's pretty neat there. Nathan? Jeffrey, how you doing? All right. What do you weigh about a buck and a half? Nah, not quite that big. That. We'll take that though. We'll appreciate that. So I'm just pushing that slime up there, you guys, just like that. That's the slime there. So that's the belly slime. That's what I was talking about. We're, we're scraping all that off. And then when we cook this up, that inner lining here of the stomach will peel right off. That's the, the touch of the backbone there. We'll just knock that piece off. And we're good to go. So that's half of a swordfish there. That's good enough. We're going to take a piece back to the kitchen and cook it up. We'll see you back there. Here's a piece of swordfish from today. We're gonna throw it on the grill right now. We got the Traeger going up to 450. And I haven't had swordfish in a while, so I'm gonna do plain and simple. Olive oil, a little bit of seasoning. Let's see how it turns out. Okay, we're gonna pat it down to kind of clean it a little bit. Wiping off that belly lining there, that belly wall. Just gonna pat this down a little bit. This fish is really fresh. You can see how it's swelled up a little bit. The meat here, you know, it kind of rose up there in the middle. 
on the other side, it'll be kind of sucked in like that. If we let this fish sit overnight and relax, it would be even easier to cook. So it is a better idea to let the fish sit for a day before you cook it. And really, if you can let it sit, then clean it the second day. But that's not always an option if you're going fishing the next day if you're traveling. It'll still be good. But in a perfect world, I'd gut it, let it sit on ice for a day, then fillet it the following day. Split it down the middle here like that. I'm just gonna knock out a little bit of that bloodline. That's mostly the bloodline. There's a little meat there, but I don't really wanna eat that. I don't have to, we have plenty of fish there. Okay, so we're gonna have the garlic olive oil. We're gonna put this on there, rub it on. I'm gonna add a little bit of seasoning on top. It puts the olive oil on the meat. That's Sarah's favorite. Pork and poultry rub going on a couple of them. And we need some fin and feather rub on a couple for me. All right, we got the Traeger at 450. We're gonna cook it nice and hot tonight. She's smoking now. Ooh, doggy, look at that. We're on the grill now. We're gonna check back on this in a few minutes. All right, the fish has been on there a little bit. It's done. We're working on the house. We're gonna have a nice area here to barbecue and put some chairs out here soon. Oh, boom, look at that. Beautiful. Oh boy. I'm trying to do this by myself with a fork. I should probably have a spatula. I better have Sarah help me next time. I've got my dinner here, some yellow squash, fresh swordfish, as fresh as it gets. And we even got Sadie eating a little bit too. What do you think, Sadie? You like to fish? All right, I gotta try this stuff out. Let's see how it is. Here it is, beautiful meat. Check that out. <gasps> it's really juicy, very good. You don't wanna overcook swordfish because you dry it out. You know, it's like overcooking a steak. No good, so. Really good. We got Sadie over here. She's eating some swordfish, eating one of those pouches, and Sarah's eating leftover pizza from last night. I'm I not sure. Oh, she got swordfish too right there. What'd you think of it? I don't like pepper, and I think he put pepper on everything to try to poison me. My no, I did not. Throat will close up. I'm allergic to pepper, so I'm eating no. pizza. Safe. I only put pepper on the yellow squash right there. You can see it. Oh no, this looks questionable. Nope, that was the seasoning right there. I'm getting back to eating dinner, guys. Hope you all liked that video. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you all next time. Thanks for being part of our channel. Say bye, Sadie. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Even Sadie likes swordfish.